Now inside the test suite, you would see we would have test runs available depending upon the number of releases and cycles that you have created and the platform against which you want to execute your test cases against. Now, since we have the approval mechanism enabled, you would see we need to approve the test runs individually as well. Now, once a test run has been approved, let's say I quickly go and approve it. All right. Now, this is an approved status. Now, from here, your QA lead, he or she can basically go and assign a tester directly to that test run. And now you can see that the assignment has been done to that specific platform release and cycle. So me as a tester, I can navigate to this particular test suite, click on execute, and I will see a list of all the different test cases that I need to execute as part of this execution. If I expand the test cases, you can see this is where I'll be able to see all my test step details. This is where I mark my execution status as passed or failed. I can see the version of my test case, the number of steps associated to my test case, I can also go ahead and change assignee for individual test cases as well. So inside one test run, if there are like multiple test cases, I can divide that amongst my team. So I can assign some of the test cases for a different user altogether. So he or she would be notified on their email that a test case inside a test suite has been associated with them. And now they can go ahead and execute these test cases. Now, if I expand this test case, you can see we have some parameters inside the test case. So this is where we provide the data grid to those parameters. To provide the data grid to the parameter, just go to the test suite, go to the test case tab inside the test suite. So you can see here are all the different tabs available, very similar to your other uh, modules. Uh, the only difference is we have platforms here available since uh, test suites can be associated to a platform as well. So if I go to the test case tab, and you can see we have these test cases available. Now, if the test cases contain a parameter, we would have add the symbol highlighted next to it. So let's say I click on the highlighted add the symbol and we will be able to see the parameters that are contained in the test case. Now from here, I can fill the data manually. Or what I can do is that I can go and utilize a data grid that I've already created. So once I utilize a data grid, you can see all the data from the grid has been populated. Click on save. And now if I go to my execution, click on execute. And once I expand this test case, now you can see that depending upon the parameters that we have provided, we have the combination of uh, 20 parameter combinations. I mean, depending upon the number of data that you have provided, we have those combinations available. Since I provided 20 rows, it has 20 parameter combinations. Now, if I expand each combination, you would see that the same test case has been repeated, but for each parameter. All right, so here you can see we have different values for those parameters. And now I can mark my execution statuses as passed or failed for those specific test cases.